Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Trans Trucking Talk. Uh, today's episode is going to be about, well it's going to be me talking about sexuality and how it relates to gender identity in my case. Um, obviously, as is with all of the videos in this series, I don't speak for trans people as a whole, I speak for myself and only myself. Last week we went to Holbrook so we're going to go from there. Uh, I think we're going to carry some packaged food. That looks like a good route to go. What I want to do is try and visit all the cities in Arizona before we branch out into another state. Um, I don't currently have the New Mexico DLC, but eventually we'll get into Nevada and California as well. Um, so we're going for Holbrook to Cayenta today. I'm probably pronouncing that all wrong again. But I know how to say Tucson now. So we'll take this job. And we'll wait for this to load here. Come on, almost there. Okay, it's... Uh, it's dark out at the minute, so we've put our lights on and we are off. Um, yeah, so... Today's topic is one that I think about a lot, at least the sexuality side of things. I have had a fairly long um, period of time where I've been very unsure of my sexuality. When I was uh, when I was still presenting as male before I realised I was trans. Um, I did come out as bisexual to my, to all of my school friends, um, and I got bullied a fair bit for that. I was one of the first openly out people at my school, especially for being bisexual. Um, there were a few people who were out as gay, but, um, no one who was actually out as bisexual, as far as I'm aware. Um, I know people who had told me after I told them, oh, me too, but weren't publicly out with it. Um, I was also at the time in one of the first uh, same-sex relationships in the school, and I got bullied a lot for that as well. It wasn't the most pleasant experience, I have to say. Um, but when I started questioning my gender identity. I also started questioning my sexuality and how I related the two together. Um, I don't think being trans has changed my sexuality. It's What it has done is opened my eyes to a whole much wider range of possibilities. Um, for example, I knew before coming out as trans, I knew about being gay and bisexual, and that was about it. Oh, and I knew a bit about being ace as well, but not huge amounts. Uh, is there anyone coming here? No, there isn't. Let's turn here. So, yeah, coming out of tra as trans and getting a lot more involved in the uh, online LGBT plus community um, really sort of expanded my horizons as far as how I could identify. So when I came out as trans, I started identifying as pan as well. Now, for people who aren't aware, pansexual, in my definition that I used as pansexual was um, that gender is not a consideration in who I'm attracted to. Um, and it's sort of, um, and some people use slightly different definitions. Um, some people say things like attracted to all genders equally, which is just as valid as a, as a definition. Um, but if you find a definition that works for you, go for that one. 
Um, I also, since then, have still been thinking about it a lot. And um, very recently, actually, I've decided to start using the term bisexual again. Um, and with this, I'm using it as the definition of attracted to my gender identity and other gender identities. Um, I don't generally use pansexual anymore. Uh, because recently I find that I've been a lot less attracted to men than to other gender identities. Um, but that's that sexuality can be a fluid thing, so I'm open to the fact that that might change in the future as well. As far as how it relates to my gender identity, like I said, I don't think being trans has changed my sexuality. It's made me a lot more aware of it and a lot more open to different ideas about sexuality than just gay, bisexual, straight and ace. They were the, the four I knew about before coming out. Um, and now there are so many more like um, the, there are things like polysexual. I believe is one. Um, there's ace, grey ace, and then you've got, um, aside from all the sexual attractions, you have uh, romantic attraction as well. And I do consider myself pan-romantic still. Um, I Romantically, I can be attracted to men just as much as I could be attracted to women or people who don't identify within the gender binary. Um, so it's, they are two separate things for me. I know a lot of people are, can be heterosexual and heteroromantic and use heterosexual as a, uh, as a word to describe both of those things, but I prefer to separate mine out because they are different for me. And, um, I think that's important for me to distinguish. Um. There are also a lot more things that I've discovered regarding sex and, sex and sexuality. I've been a lot more open to learning about things like polyamory and um, and kink scenes and things like that. It's something that I'd never really explored or even thought about before coming out because I didn't feel comfortable with myself. So why would I feel comfortable considering anything that's still currently considered out of the norm. Um, so coming out has really broadened my horizons, I think. It's made me aware of so many more different ways that people engage with sex and sexuality than I could even dream about before coming out. So I think that's been a really positive change for me. I've been I've become a lot more sex positive. I used to be honestly kind of scared of it. I still haven't engaged in sexual relations with anyone yet, but that's I'm waiting till I find the right person I want to engage with. And that's my choice. I'm not waiting till marriage or anything. I'm still not even sure if I believe that I want to get married or anything like that. So I'm not waiting for that. I'm just waiting for the right person who I can take things at my pace with. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't brought up, I'm trying to think how to word this. I was brought up in a way where I started believing from a young age that sex was a bad thing. And that's not necessarily a product of my parents being bad parents or anything. I just didn't know anything about sex until I was about 11. Um, when we learned it in school, we had our sex education classes in year six and I learned sort of the mechanics of it and about puberty then. That was my first experience with it and until then it just hadn't really been talked about. Um, and again, I'm not faulting my parents for this. They 
both did a wonderful job raising me, I believe. Try not to hit that truck. Um, so, yeah, since before I really came out, I didn't have any friends I felt comfortable discussing sex and sexuality with, and now it's something I can message a friend and ask a kind of weird sex question, and they won't mind at all. It's something that's been really liberating for me, and it makes me feel a lot more comfortable in my identity and in my choice of word to or words to describe my sexuality. Um, I also use very frequently the words gay and queer to describe my sexuality and um, a lot of that is for um, is a lot of the time when I use gay is when I'm talking to close friends and they already know the ins and outs of my not necessarily the ins and outs, but they already know that I'm bisexual and um, with a with a preference in with a preference for people of my gender identity. I think that's how I want to say that. Um, so using the word gay can apply a lot of the time to me, and the word queer I see as sort of an umbrella term for people who are not heterosexual or heteroromantic um, and I am comfortable using that word to describe myself and I am comfortable with others using that word to describe me. Um, as far as sexuality relating to gender identity, a lot of people conflate the two and think that being trans is some sort of fetish and a lot of trans people get sexual pleasure from dressing as their um as their in their chosen presentation and i'm not sure if there are cases of that i haven't personally come across any but i haven't done huge amounts of research on that but i do know that for me it's my gender presentation is about me being comfortable in my body and that has allowed me to feel more sexual feelings rather than repressing them and pushing them down like I used to. Um, so it's, I can see why people do call it a fetish or think that the two are very much linked when they are not necessarily. Um, but that's not the case for me. It, I'm like, my gender identity is trans and my sexuality has nothing to do with that. I just feel more open about my sexuality because I'm comfortable with my gender identity. And I think that's been a very important step for me because I didn't used to be. Uh, we're almost finished this job here, so I'll just focus on not murdering anyone while we do this. This has been a fairly standard job, actually. It's been quite a good length, I think. And we will bring it to this to supermarket here. I think it's a supermarket. I don't really know. It looks like a supermarket. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's a supermarket. Or close enough. Where do they want it? Yeah, we can park it. Let's try parking it for once. I thought that was a one-way bit and that we were just going to ignore that for now. But it's not, so we're fine. We're good. I do not want to skip parking the trailer at the minute. I think we've got this. Yep, there we go. So this has been sort of me just rambling about sex and sexuality. If anyone has any specific questions, there'll be a Google form in the description. Um, you're welcome to ask questions anonymously. Um, as I've said in a previous episode, any troll questions will be deleted and ignored so just don't bother it's a waste of your time um but yeah any questions about my sexuality specifically or how i identify or anything to do with being trans feel free to ask them i'm basically an open book when it comes to this i want to help people learn 
and I believe I'm in a place where I can afford to do that emotionally, where a lot of trans people can't, so I want to be able to step up and do that. Um, thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.